Hello, welcome. Again, I am Brandilyn Gorman, and today I just kind of wanted to just share with you my testimony and how I became to uh, how I became saved. I mean, if I'm going to start listening to somebody, I kind of want to know a little bit about them. So, how did I become to know the Lord? Well, okay, growing up. So if you've watched any of the other videos, my mom and dad divorced. My mom was raised in the Methodist church um, her pretty much her whole life. Um, but for us growing up, we were pretty much just CEOs of church. You know, Christmas and Easter only kind of people. I remember visiting churches here and there, but nothing ever really took root. And God was not really ever talked about in, in the household. We never prayed over our meals. We never talked about God. You know, it was just, I was told I was a Christian. I told I believe, I was told I believed in Jesus. And therefore that's just what I grew up always saying. I would always, I would always, you know, confess. I am a Christian. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he came from a Virgin Mary. You know, I believe 33 years later he died and, and he was resurrected and, and all of that stuff. And that's, that's what I said. And I thought that that meant I was saved. In high school, I went down every time there was a, there's a traveling minister and um, I would go down and I would, you know, say I'm, I'm getting saved again. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and then I was baptized even quite a lot. Was I saved? I don't know. Because when I look back, I don't think my belief system in Jesus was any more different than the, than the, than the belief system that Satan has. I mean, he too, he was there during the birth of Jesus. He too was there when he, when they hung Jesus on the cross. I mean, he thought he had won. He too was there. He believes that Jesus resurrected. So what was the difference between me believing and knowing who God and Jesus were versus actually being saved? Did I actually have the golden ticket to my salvation because I said that, I got baptized, but I will tell you this, there was absolutely zero fruit in my life of Christ. I don't know. I asked God off and on, God, was I saved? Have I, you know, back in my days when I was drinking and partying and carrying on, if I would have died, would I would have went to heaven? He's never given me an answer. So I don't know if he's just saying, it doesn't matter. You are now. You're my child now. I don't, I don't really know. But, you know, I did live kind of a, a little crazy little party girl there for a while, you know. And, um, you know, not really proud. But that's just, well, that's just my past. So it is what it is. So, I mean, did I have my golden ticket to heaven? I don't know. But I will say when I turned 23... Um, um, so I went to go see a play that at the time my boyfriend was in and I went to go see this play and I remember, um, sitting there all by myself in the sanctuary and it was a small little church and, um, they all of a sudden I was sitting down and everybody stood up and they started this, this crazy stuff called praise and worship and everybody's just clapping and carrying on and you know, and just enjoying the this music of God I'd never even heard before. And I was just, oh my God, what in the world? I was like, they're going to bring out snakes any minute. Like, th this is it. Like, they're going to they're gonna make me drink some blood or something. I had never in my life experienced anything charismatic in my life. And it scared the snot out of me. And I remember just standing there going, oh my God, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? And then finally it ended. And I, uh, so funny because I'll never forget there was this lady who was sitting in front of me. Her name was Nancy Baker. And she turns around to me and she probably kind of felt the need to maybe say something to me because I was just standing there like this. Like, completely terrified. I had no idea. And she was like, hi, I'm Nancy Baker. How are you? You know, we shook hands and and I guess I kind of felt the need to explain to her, like, why this look of terror was on my face. And I know I had to stay now because it was a small church. And um, I just remember saying to her, uh, yeah, my name is Brandilyn, and I'm just not really used to this kind of church. I, I guess I just felt the need to, to, to clarify this look on my face. And I'll never forget what she said. She looked at me and she says, you know what? That's okay because here we just enjoy praising God. We just enjoy and we like having fun with Jesus. That's what she said. We like having fun with Jesus. I had never heard that before. Jesus, fun, church, fun, never, 
Have those ever gone together for me? As a matter of fact, I was like, oh, it's always so boring. I didn't want to ever go. And that might be fine for some of you, but for me and my personality, I need some action going on. <laughs> you know, and when she said that to me, it like it resurrected my spirit. Like it was like like a transformer. <laughs> and I became like this, like this, my spirit like woke up or something. And I was like, whoa. And I remember thinking, that's something I can kind of jump on board with. And so shortly after that, um, shortly after that, um, I got to know who is still even now my spiritual mom. So she went from like my surrogate mom to like my other mom to like now she's my spiritual mom. And I owe so much to her, even, I mean, to this day, like she sewed into me. And so I started going to church. So I was living in college and I would literally drive 45 minutes one way down these little farm to market roads here in Texas. We got farm to market roads. I don't know if y'all do in other places, but I drove 45 minutes by myself. Okay. So the, the boyfriend that I had at the time, like he just kind of, he just, didn't go anymore for whatever reason and I went and I would draw by myself and I remember getting this little tape okay for those of you who don't know what cassette tapes are I'm showing my age I would play this little cassette tape and it had like a very small snippet of like some praise and worship music and I would just play that over and over and over again and I would drive in the dark on Monday night and I would skip praise and worship because that was just a little too freaky for me. I was not ready for some praise and worship that was weird to me. And I would come and I would sneak in. And at the time, the church was called Coon Neck Community Church. That's how backwoods that really was. But the pastor that was there was Brother Jerry. And it felt like I would just sneak in and he would just preach to just me. Of course, there was other people there. But it was like, it was just for me. And I was getting fed. I was like this Sponge. I could not get a hold of whatever the heck this stuff was. I could not get enough of it. And then I would drive home 45 minutes all by myself. And I would do that every Monday. And then I remember after a while, I called my spiritual mom. And I was like, when does Sunday service start? And she's like, well, praise and worship starts at 1030. And then, you know, we usually start service about 1130, 1145. And I was like, well, what is praise and worship? And she just like totally just laughed at me. And I was like, oh my gosh. So then I started going on Sundays. And then I joined the dance team there. That's right. So was it, oh my gosh, when was this? Like, two, like you're 2000? 1999? Yeah, I think so. So um, whatever it was, I was about 23, 24. So do the math. I don't know. Apparently during these videos, I get dates wrong all the time. So um I joined the dance team there. We did, you know, videos and, and, and human videos and dances and stuff like that. And I was a sponge, a sponge. And I remember going over to my spiritual mom's house. Her name's Ginger. I would go over there. She would just pour into me. I mean, we would sit up till two, three in the morning. She would just talk to me about God and talk to me about the Holy Spirit and, and introduce me to spiritual warfare and, and who, who the enemy is. I just, I do not believe you can have, I don't think, I think you need to know who the enemy is because that way you know how to fight. So, I mean, she would introduce me to that and, you know, that's when my life began to start being transformed into Christ. I really started thriving to be Christ-like. I was not perfect. I messed up all the time, but my heart, see, God looks at your heart. That's what he looks at. The condition of your heart. If you steal something, did you do it because you're greedy or, you know, do you have issues or was it really because you really needed something to eat? It's a heart thing with God. And my heart was on fire for him and I could not get enough of him. So, was I saved back then? I really don't know. I may not ever really know. I think that is between you and God. And maybe that's why he will never give me an answer if I was saved, if I would have died back in those days, if I would have died in, in a car wreck and, and lived. I, I don't know. He's a just God. He's a good God, but I don't really know. Um, I will say that when I look back and I say, when were you saved? I say I was 23 because that's when my life changed. That's when I really started understanding and having a relationship with God. See, God is relational. 
that's what he wants from you is a relationship with you. It's so important. He wants his children to know him. I would be devastated if my children didn't want anything to do with me. They never called me. They, they never wanted to talk with me. I never got to share with them. I never got to teach them. You know, I mean, that what a horrible relationship that is. And that's what God wants from us is a relationship. So that is my story about uh, how I came to know to know Christ. And I haven't looked back since. It's the best thing I have ever done in my life. Um, I look forward to spending more time with God every day. I look forward to getting to know Him more every day. You know, there is there's the creatures in heaven that circle the throne 365 days of the year, you know, our years, and now all these things is holy, 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 holy. Because there's such new things to scream holy about for Him. And I look forward to getting to know my God, my Father, my friend, each and every day. So that's my salvation story. And um, what's yours?